proceed with the first presentation concerning the second chapter of the book. Okay, and the speaker is going to be C. Ahrez. Okay, so the floor is yours. Good morning. So, I hope, and I, I wish you would enjoy my presentation, okay, which is about uh, first language acquisition. Okay, it's a collaborative work, by the way. So, the, the, our presentation, by, by the way, is based on the book entitled Principles of Language Learning and Teaching. Okay, then the content goes as follows. We are. I'm going to begin with my book. So my part is going to be. It's going to be about first language acquisition. Number one, number two, theories of language acquisition. Then in which I'm going to tackle uh, two approaches and their weaknesses. By the way, so behavior approaches, challenges to this approach, nativist approaches, then challenges to nativist approaches. C Unis is going to tackle functional approach, cognitive and language development, social interaction and language development. Then, see, you and are going to proceed with uh, issues on the first language acquisition in, in terms of competence and performance, comprehension and production. See, Akhir is going to deal with nature and nurture, universal, systematicity and variability, language and thought, and, 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 uh, and imitation. See, Mustafa is going to deal with practice and fluency, input, then, then discourse, then the last part is going to be by Mustafa again, it's about first language acquisition in science of language teaching. Great. So these are some notes about the first language acquisition in terms of its history. So the capacity for acquiring competence in one's native language <coughs> within the first five years of life has always been the subject of interest for, for many centuries. The modern uh, research on child language acquisition dates back to the latter part of the 18th century. Not until the second half of the 20th century did researchers begin to analyze child language systematically and to try to discover uh, the nature of psycholinguistic process that enables every human being to gain fluent control of complex system of communication. This is just some notions about the history of of, of first language acquisition. Then this one, this is, uh, by the way, uh, some, inf the, uh, some information I took from the book and I transformed them into this chart, okay, just to simplify the, your understanding. So here, this is very in, uh, necessary to this presentation because most of the approaches that, 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 that uh, come later are going to explain the uh, why, 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 for example, in uh, uh, ch uh, while uh, ch ch children are acquiring their 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 first language, go through processes, okay, or stages. I would like stages, and these are the stages that you, in, uh, I think they are known to you, known to most of you. So we can read them together. Like this theory is the first language acquisition. So first stage begins small as small babies, ch children babble, coo, cry. Vocally and non vocally send and receive messages. Then the end at the end of at the end of the at the end of the first year, they uh, attempt to imitate words and speech sounds they hear around them are made, and about this time they utter their first words. <coughs> By about eighteen months, these words have multiplied considerably, and two words and three word sentences start to appear and telegraphic utterances. Uh, that's what we call when we have uh, one, uh, two words, three words, for example. Those structures are called in, uh, in, second, in, uh, in, uh, in the theories of first language acquisition or second language acquisition are telegraphic utterances. For example, you can say, all gun milk, this is a sentence uttered by a child, shoes off, bye bye daddy, mommy sock, etc. Though these are called telegraphic utterances. <clears throat> By two years age, children can comprehend more sophisticated language and produce or four questions and negatives. For example, what Jeff to win, what not sleep, why not, why not me sleeping, etc. By, by, uh, by about age of three, children may generate non-stop chattering or incessant conversation. 
So, and this creativity, as you see here, in those, uh, through those stages, there is a kind of creativity for, on the part of the children. Okay? And this creativity goes on uh, till their uh, adulthood. Okay? For here, we have main questions that, uh, that, uh, that most theorists uh, approaches in the, in the in language acquisition in general are, are trying to come up with, to, come, uh, to, to reply to and <coughs> respond to. So how can you explain this fantastic journey from the first anguished cry at birth to other competence in a, lang in a language? From the first word to tens of thousands, from cognitive, from, from telegraphies to compound complex, cognitively precise, socioculturally appropriate sentences, just a few short years later. These are questions that most of the, uh, most, uh, of the approaches that we're going to see later are going to, are going to answer. Okay? These are sorts of questions that theories that I have said. Then, this is the first theory which is behavior approaches. According to, this, uh, to, to, those, uh, to, the ad to those who advocate this theory, they do claim that language is a fundamental part of a total human behavior, like any other behaviors. Okay. It is focused on the immediately perceptible aspects of linguistic behavior, the publicly observable responses, and the relationships or association between those responses and events in the world surrounding them. So this is to say, the, it's, it's something observable, okay? Language is something observable, it's, it's, it's concrete, it's, it's perceptible, etc. Then, an effective language behavior is considered as the production of correct responses to stimuli. So when there is a response to a stimuli, which is, how can we see that, how can we know, how can we uh, judge that the effectiveness of, of, a, of a response of a language behavior is when, it, when the response to stimuli is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is it means it's correct and it's, uh, it's appropriate, etc. And this is up to teachers and parents to uh, reinforce it, as we are going to say later. Children produce linguistic responses that are, that are, that are what? And some, some, uh, something is missing here. So children produce linguistic responses that are uh, reinf reinforced. Okay, this is the missing word here. Then, according to Skinner, one of the pioneers, uh, according to Skinner, the theory of verbal behavior, 1957, it was, by the way, an extension of his general theory of learning by operant condition. I think in the first semester we talked, we said we exhausted this issue, okay? Classical conditioning and uh, by Pavlov, perhaps? Okay, and operant conditioning. What does it mean, operant condition? Operant condition refers to conditioning in which the organism, means a human being, emits a response or operant, means a sentence or an address, without necessarily observable stimuli. That operant is maintained, means learned, by reinforcement. Skinner claims that verbal behavior, like other behaviors, is controlled by its consequences. That is to say, when for, when, for example, a child says, for example, I want milk, okay? The parents at that time should <coughs> provide him with milk immediately after the, the utterance. Otherwise, this, this utterance or this, uh, this, this, uh, this utterance will not be maintained, will not be le uh, learned in the future. And uh, on the other hand, if you want the, the, the kids to ignore, if you want that response not to be maintained in the future, it's up to parents, teachers, not to ignore it. Means don't reinforce it. Means uh, uh, with the with a view to weakening it. And uh, then challenges. Then this is about uh, just briefly about behavior theory of learning. Then this theory has many shortcomings. One of which is that Skinner theory attracted a number of critics. One of one of these critics means Charles Chomsky in 1959. According to Chomsky's theory, uh, according to behavior, learning theory, it means what? Con well, conditioning and reinforcement is hard to press to explain the fact that every sentence you speak or <coughs> write is novel, never before uttered either by you or by any other. So, in the eyes of the behaviors, okay, they couldn't explain at all. They couldn't know. They were not aware of the fact that people, especially kids, have the ability to produce novel utterances, new utterances, 
which, as you see here, never produced before by them or by anyone else. That is a fact that is lost to them. Just to say, when the, as we have mentioned, there is the idea of imitation, okay? So when the children are learning, and they start learning, speaking, they imitate, for example, you could hear, we say, uh, but it happens that at some point in time, the children create and speak novel utterances that they have to spell. They understand what you find yes. and yes. in the process of their learning. Refers to the idea of imitation. Imitation, okay. So they couldn't explain this. Oh. So this created it. So these novel utterances are nevertheless created by every young children as they literally play with language. Okay? And this is, in this case, we talk about creativity. It begins since the early ages, then it, it, it and the, it goes on, okay? it continues on to. The, to the adulthood, okay, which is, as I said, behavior, uh, behaviors couldn't explain this, okay. Then, and uh, uh, this is a theory, which is called mediation theory, that comes to modify, okay, modify and, uh, and uh, it comes to broaden the, the theory of behaviorists, of, behaviors in of, of, of behaviorism. It was an attempt to broaden and modify the base of behavioral theory. According to this theory, meaning was accounted for by the claim that the linguistic stimulus, a word or a sentence, elicits a mediating response that is self-stimulating. According to Charles uh, Osgood, 19, 1953, 1957, called this self-stimulating as a, re a representational mediation process. <coughs> by the way, this theory in the book, it was not well illustrated. Okay, just they mentioned mediation. That's what they mentioned in the book. I checked online, but I couldn't come up with what it means exactly. Okay, what it means exactly. This, is, this process is covered and invisible, acting within the learner. Yet, this mediation theory, although it, it, it attempt means, attempted means to broaden and modify the theory, at least it, come, it, 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 it generated something new. It added something new to, to the theory of behaviorism which is that something is abstract. Uh, unlike, unlike, unlike the, uh, we call them classics. Uh, classical means uh, the old theor uh, theoreticians. They believe that learning all of it is something observable, perceptible, okay? Something, they, could, they didn't take uh, learner's contribution. Means what's going on inside the mind, etc. They, they didn't take this into account. But this, according to mediation theory, at least it hinted to something that there is something going on inside the human, uh, in, inside the human brain, or mind in general. If you have any something to add to mediation theory, you can be free to raise your hand. Mediation theory, uh, however, still left many questions about language unanswered. The abstract nature of language, the relationship between meaning and utterances, were unresolved. These are questions that are still left without any answer. The rigor of behavior, psychology only began to explain the miracle of language acquisition. Therefore, it opened the doors to new approaches which presumed the innate properties of language. At least, it, uh, it added something, and at the same time, it opened doors to other approaches, uh, which, which uh, the next one, another approach is going to be about, K, uh, about the nativist approach. The term, uh, this is the second one, okay? The second one, the term nativist is derived from the assertion that language acquisition is innately determined, that we are born with, we are born with a, a genetic capacity that predisposes us to a systematic perception of language around us. Is it clear? We are born with something, we are born with, 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 uh, with, with abilities. All people are born with mental abilities. Which make, yeah, which make them ready to acquire the language, 
Okay. That's it. This hypothesis gained attention from many researchers, by the way. Chomsky claimed that the existence of innate properties of language to explain the child's master of a native language in such a short time. Means uh, one of uh, one of uh, the advocates of uh, those, uh, this nativist approach, Chomsky, who claimed the existence of innate innate properties of language to explain the child's master of native language. What he meant by this, he meant. Yeah, yeah, thank you. This in yeah, this innate knowledge was embodied in, in metaphorical little black box. We call it in the in the brain which is lad. Okay, lad which is to say language acquisition device. McNeil, 1966, described the lad as consisting of four innate linguistic properties. What are the functions? The function of this. What are the properties uh, of the lad? He said, A, the ability to distinguish speech sounds from other sounds in the environment. Number two, the ability to organize linguistic data into various classes that can, that can later be refined. Knowledge that only a certain linguistic system is possible and that other kinds are not. Clear? Yes. The ability to engage in constant evaluation of the developing linguistic system to construct the simplest possible system out of the available linguistic input. Okay? It means the ability to choose from your, 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 uh, means your input, choosing depends on the situation. For example, in this case, in this situation, you use, uh, for example, you use archaic language. In this case, you are, you are going to be formal. In this, in this situation, you'll be informal. The ability to choose, that's what makes it. Uh, uh, unique and mysterious. According to this approach, children were presumed to use innate ability to generate potentially infinite number of utterances. Aspects of meaning, abstractness and creativity were accounted for more adequately. So here we have meaning, abstractness and creativity. Three words that added in this, uh, in this approach, which were absent in, in, which were absent in in the behaviorism, right? Yeah, this is the then to this matrix approach of this principle of the dangerous and then we are putting the device. Okay? Yeah. Then to these principles, accounts or aspects of meaning, abstractness and creativity were accounted for more adequate. adequate. Yeah. Now we have challenges to nativist approaches. In subsequent years of the generative rule governed model in the Chomsky and tradition was challenged as well. Okay. Although it added new things to language acquisition, still in itself it's weak. Okay. So the assumption underlying this tradition is that those generative rules or atoms in a linguistic sense are connected serially with one connection between each pair of neurons in the brain. Okay. This, is, this is going to be clear later. In a, reaction, in a reaction to this, a new model named Parallel Distributed Processes, DPDP, okay, was provided by uh, Spolsky, 19, uh, 1989, in his book, uh, page 149. Based on this model, the information is processed simultaneously at several levels of attention. What I understand personally from this one is now, if, uh, if, you, if, you, if you look at the children, uh, uh, the ch uh, ch kids, ki uh, kids' language in general, especially at the, when, they, when they are two years, for example, they do produce sentences which might look, uh, might, uh, might look wrong for us as adults. But to them, they are still correct, by the way. Chomsky says this. Then here, for example, they say, like, that they the girls, for example, or, or my, they, they, they could produce my, my code, for example, or this of my car. Just imagine, although they can't say car anyway. So here, this this what you call serial. What is serial? According to Chomsky, he said that he said that language is gen uh, language in a language of human. It is it, it is generated according to rules. 
serials. For example, this is what, what uh, my is, for example, is called as this is a sentence. Okay? This is a sentence, by the way. Okay? And in this sentence, we have two points here. We have, yeah, we call it this is pivot. <coughs> then plus one, this is, a, we call it pivot, which is my. Okay? This is fixed. It doesn't change for in the eyes of kids. Okay? And car can be any other, for example, my, my, my head, for example. My, my dad, for example, be my etc. So this is it's a it's, there is a means the connection there means the language is generated according to rules. That's what he said. That's the way I see it personally, and that's why I understood it from the book. Okay, the, let me let me repeat this. The assumption underlying this tradition is that those generative rules or items in the linguistic sense are connected serious, uh, serially which we do one connection between each pair of neurons in the brain. In reaction to this, a new model named parallel distribu uh, distributed processes was provided, etc. Then, can you go to the next, please? Based on this model, the information is processed simultaneously at several levels of attention. Example here. As you are reading, for example, you, as you are reading these slides now, your brain is attending to letters, words, juncture, meaning, syntactic relationships, relationships, textual discourse, as well as schemata, or what you call uh, your background, background knowledge that you, you bring to the text, for example. An example is going to explain this more. A child's... So just to go back to the question, you said that the previous approach was that language was processed as a child. Okay, yeah, a series yeah. of all parts. Okay? And then this is the minimum of all chunks. Okay? So we can take that. And then there's no, there's no separation, there's no number of whatever. But this is the new model called parallel user processing. And it means that when you want to hear something or whatever, so there is a an analysis of all that at different levels while you are listening, okay? Yeah, there's an example. Not as a chat. Just to go to the idea of difference between surgery and parallel distributed processing. You are attending to letters, and then at the same time you are attending to words, and the meaning, and then context, it is okay? Yeah. And what do you just separately, okay? Parallelly, separately, but separately at each level. Uh, parallel, okay? You are doing all this. At different levels, separately, but parallel and simultaneously. Okay? Yeah, by the way, I said the word, I said my is pivot, the other way is open word. Okay, those are other words you can add, etc. That goes like this. For example, my my car is, okay, that is again, can be, becomes, can be, etc. It's, it's, can you say here that the idea of from finite rules, you can have a new this is not related to that, okay? This is something that works on that, okay? Yeah. Uh, the idea of from a finite set of rules on an infinite set of sentences, etc., is due to the fact that we're having this language acquisition device. In the previous slide, I'll explain that. Account for all these characteristics of creativity, all this creativity, okay? Is accounted for via this principle of innateness language acquisition device. Okay. If you go to the previous slides, see the first. Okay. So, according to this approach, that is to say, language acquisition device and all the characteristics you see there, A, B, C, D, then to this approach, children were presumed to use innate abilities to generate a potentially infinite number of utterances. Aspects of meaning, abstractness, and creativity were adopted. So this is this is related to whatever, but in the following slides, it's another dimension. Yeah. Here, they are talking about the processing of the language. Okay? The processing of the language according to making this approach and how, and this new principle called parallel distributed processing. In the native approach and the talk and so on, they used to take the processing as processing one chunk. A sentence or word or whatever. The process, we process the same, we process it as a chunk. We don't separate things. But then comes this new process called parallel distribution processing, 
we say that when we are processing language or input, what do we do? No, don't take it as a challenge like that. No, there is something going on at separate levels, okay, and simultaneously, parallel, at the same time. That is to say, example, as you are reading these slides now, what happens in your brain? Your brain is attending, <coughs> processing, yeah. using this parallel distributed processing rather than the serial principle. What do we do? Letters, words, gender, and meaning, and syntactic relationships, textual discourse, as well as camera that you bring to the text. Parallel, but separately. Okay, not as much. Yeah. Uh, it says uh, a child's or adult's linguistic performance may be the consequence of many levels of simultaneous ne neural interconnections rather than a serial process of one rule being applied, then another, then another, and so forth. Okay, example of a uh, uh, symphony at page 131. Uh, he gave us an example of symphony. I don't know if I can read it. If it is possible, just briefly. Uh, he said, he said, he said, a simple analogy to music may may further illustrate this complex notion. Think, think of, think of an orchestra playing a symphony. The score for the symphony may have, let's say, twelve separate parts that are performed simultaneously. And he said, the symphony of the human brain enables us to process many segments and levels of language, conditions, affect, and perception, all at once. According to this model, a sentence which has phonological, morphological, syntactic, lexical, semantic, discourse, discourse, sociolinguistic, socio and strategic properties is not generated by a series of rules. Okay. Rather, sentences are the result of the, sim of the simultaneous interconnection of a multitude of brain cells. Okay, just is just uh, it's, it's the same, it's the same what 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 you just just said. Just uh, uh, things means words are not are not generated uh, are not generated according to rules. Things are language doesn't work this way. For example, look at this sentence. It said here a sentence. I don't know, sentence that has phonological, morphological, syntactic, lexical, semantic discourse, socio linguistic and strategic properties is not generated by rules. How can you generate rules, for example, for when, when it comes to, example, to like uh, semantics? Can, uh, can, uh, can you think about rules, for example, subject, verb, object, etc.? Can you think, for example, about socio linguistic, about, for example, language in, in, so, in social context? We don't, we don't need rules here. Some things going inside, they, a lot of means uh, processes happen concurrently. That's what I understand. It's like there's no rules. Rules when it comes to grammar, yes. As Chomsky said, universal grammar, people respect one structure. But, but these people say no. So things are not, are not, are not, are not this way. Yes, Simstar? So maybe here, uh, after this, this criticism, maybe the advice to another dimension which is the cultural, social, uh, cultural aspect of the use of language, meaning that when you are put in certain situations, you are not only attending to, to the rules themselves, but you are, uh, you are presenting or you are taking into account other dimensions, yeah, which exactly. is the context, the social, cultural dimension. And this is one characteristic of language. That's what makes it, uh, what, 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 Language, language is not just rules, that's what they want to say. Not just rules. There are other dimensions that you said. Okay. Look at the first uh, part of your slide. Child, or adult, linguistic performance, mainly the consequence of many levels of simultaneous neural interconnections. This is the new model, uh, okay? Proposing here. Not Serial process of one will be applied, then another, then another one. Okay? Things take yeah. place yeah. concurrently, but at the same time, simultaneously, parallel, and separate. So there are rules for phonology, rules for phonetics, for syntax, for me, whatever. All these are separated, okay? Yeah. But at the same time, they take place simultaneously and parallel. Okay? For the previous model, 
They say that there are separations, they just consider them as separated. Same process, one will be applied to another, then another, then another. They are applied to gravity. Okay, no, that's not the case. Everything takes place simultaneously, parallelly, and all the way. Okay? It's like if we all the same, it's like if they are taking one aspect of the previous approach, like serial, separate. But they are not separate altogether. They are, when they are working, they are working simultaneously. Okay? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. They take these components, yes, there are rules. There is a rule, or there is a rule, 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 rule taking place separately. But at the same time, they take place simultaneously and homogeneity. There is homogeneity between all things. Okay? So this is the uh, difference between the First and second. Yeah, as you said at the beginning of your presentation, you said the word slippery, for example. Slippery. Slippery means there is no, when, a, when an, a, a model or an approach comes, it doesn't uh, completely eclipse the previous one, but it just partially, just it, it modifies it, it added something new. Or, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's uh, means uh, it's true with all approaches. Another, uh, another branch in, in psycholinguistic inquiry. It's called connect, connectionism, okay, another one. So the previous one is this. This is uh, parallel distributed processing. Then another one is connectionism. Neurons, according to this, uh, to the, to this uh, model, to this branch, neurons in the brain are set to form multiple connections. Each of the 100 billion nerve cells in the brain may be linked to as many as one, uh, ten thousand of its counterparts. This is this is something uh, factual. Now next, in this approach, experience leads to learning by strengthening particular connections, sometimes at the expense of weakening others. Okay. Just by the way, before I before I continue, please, while you're reading the chapter, the the author just just uh, just chose uh, just bombastic words. Without, without, without explaining them. So you have to go back and explain, etc. That's what makes them difficult this way, anyway. So this is going to be simple. An example here, the first language acquisition here, of English regular. Listen, this is an example that, we, that will explain connectionism. It's going to explain. The first language acquisition of English regular past tense forms by children may proceed as... Something is missing here. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, it's it's sometimes to be connect with connect. Um, I will just to explain this to you. The connection. This example may explain. Just how long? This example can explain. Okay. So here, first, uh, for, first, a child might yes, name. Maybe you can read. Don't worry. Just a bit. Yeah, just. First, a child may confidently connect the form went. With the verb go. Okay. okay, okay, this is the beginning. A child may confidently connect the form went with the verb go. Okay, mm -hmm. continue. Then children will often perceive another connection, the regular ed suffix uh, attached to a verb and start using the word go with. Uh -huh. Finally, with more complex connections, children will perceive go with as incorrect. And maintain both connections. The the ed form, the ed form connected the most verb and the wait form as a special connection, according to. Okay, okay, this okay, this fine. Thank you. So here, as you see, connection is they just according to this model, connectionism. It just it is all all of it is based on the idea of learners to connect. They associate. They associate meanings to the words, etc. When they, for, for, for example, here, when they see the words, for example, went, went with go, when they learn somewhere at home or in the class or somewhere, when they see went, the past form of go, they keep it in mind as the past form. But when they are introduced to another new rule somewhere, that there is another form to express to uh, another, another form of uh, verbs in the past, in the, in the past, which is ed. At this level, they can't, this, they, they can't di differentiate between two others. But later on, with more exposure, they start to discover lures by themselves, by, by discovering that they can discover later, for example, uh, 
Uh, finally, with more complex connections, children might perceive the goad as incorrect. Then with themselves, they try to, to select what is correct, what is incorrect. So that conne means connectionism means you associate uh, rules with their meaning, words, and that's why I understand it. Is this, is this the way you see it? Uh, this is one side. Mm -hmm. Another side, in general, of how this uh, so uh, this this theory uh, came to to explain this uh, um, the situation in which uh, a person uh, can, uh, for example, uh, do uh, two processes at the same time without one affecting the other. For example, riding a bike or bike and uh, uh, talking in the phone at the same time. So how these things are connected in uh, syllabus and those stuff without affecting your way of biking and talking in the phone? Uh, to my knowledge, Naim, I think this is not mentioned in the book. What is mentioned in the book, I think what you said is, is applicable to this, parallel distribution pro, uh, pro, uh, pro, uh, what you said. No, no. I don't, I don't, I don't know. But, but what you said is true with this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's true with this. Okay. So these are connections. What is an example of a rule or a connection that they start learning? They start learning when they know the law or ED, so we use it for uh so this is everything. Okay. But then by the time the children go into a further higher complex connections, saying that a new or a new connection, whereby yes, ED we use it only for regular verbs, but for regular irregular verbs, there are some other ways to do the past tense. So that's why instead of saying go, I say went. Connections, rules. Okay? Connections, rules. Yeah, and this party is done by, by kids by themselves. Okay, they discover yeah. themselves yeah. later on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think this is a connection. No. It is a connection. Thank you very much. Okay, that's it. That's it. Let's make it a complex connection now. Okay, that's a complex connection now. So he's doing this connection. I'm done. It's a good opportunity to talk about this. Thank you very much. This is my father. Before we move to the next video, I'm going to show this one. Thank you, see you.